be with us on earth as it is in heaven today. God, we thank you. And all God's people said, amen.
put your hands together this morning. There's joy this morning. We've waited for this day. We've gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. And you're the reason we're here. And you're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flow. Presence in this place, your glory on our face. We're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud. You're standing with us now, Lord. Unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here, and you're the reason we're. Oh, 
show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, love. Show us your glory, Lord. And on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in Just lift your hands this morning. Oh, we need you, Lord. Let the heavens open, let your kingdom move, all of faith and hope, our great God. Come on, sing it. Let the heavens open, 
Let your kingdom move on our faith and hope. Our great God, oh, let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move on our faith and hope. Our great God, let the heavens open. Let your kingdom move on our faith and hope. The hell is over. Yes, Lord. Oh, she never will see the Lord. She never will see the Lord. She Father, to speak to your heart. I hope you are, and you'll take your Bible, if you would, please, honoring his word as we stand before him in 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, one verse of Scripture, and across the page, two others, and then Revelation 2 and 3. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Chapter 5, verse 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. 
our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands says, I know your deeds, your toil and perseverance, and that you cannot tolerate evil men, and that you put to test those who call themselves apostles, and they are not, and you found them to be false. And you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from when you, where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds that you did at first, or else I'm coming to you and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. He who has an ear, verse 7, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Verse 10, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Verse 23, I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you according to your deeds. Father, today you are speaking to your church, and we want to hear your voice. You're calling us not to be believers, but to be overcomers. And I pray today that you will help us embrace what Revelation speaks of those that will make heaven. I pray, God, that you will open up the gifts of our heart and lives today to you, that willingly we may express our love as overcomers to the one who truly has overcome. Bless this word, Holy Spirit. Work in this this place, I pray, in Jesus' name. And everyone together would say, amen. You may be seated. Again, if you'll help me as I preach this word today, I believe these verses of Scripture are true. Amen? I believe this Bible is the word of God. Amen? Amen? And God is saying to us in these and other verses that all Christians are supposed to be what? Overcomers. Every Christian has been called, gifted, and required to overcome. To overcome sin and the pull of the world. To overcome selfish living. To overcome excuses. To not live the way that John 1.12 says. As many as received him, to them he gave the power, right, and privilege to become children of God to those who believe on his name. It's vital that you and I act and live like we believe this. Yet, unfortunately, many Christians live a powerless life with little Christian service because they've forgotten their identity and their purpose. Jesus is our source of overcoming. If you've chosen to live for Christ, you're a child of the Almighty, and you are to serve His purpose on earth because there are no ordinary Christians. Only overcomers make heaven. Today, would you first look and maybe write this down? Know your place in God. I make this statement having viewed Scripture this week, that there is no such thing as ordinary Christians when God has called us to be overcoming. Revelation 3.21 says, To he who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. No loving father wants his children to lose. And God, our eternal Father, has already spoken. He wants us to win. Win every time. Overcome by His power. It's why 1 John 5, 4 says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. 
Faith in Him and His purpose will ensure victory because the one who is in us is greater than he that's in this world. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15.57 adds, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when you know who you are, you will know what to do. We can do greater works of winning souls, healing bodies, and using our gifts to build His church that Jesus has called us to in John 14, verse 13, so that we can enjoy God's reward to overcomers. Because of this, I challenge you today to shake off attacks to your faith. You and I are attacked in our spiritual life. Is that fair to say? Attacked by the enemy? Maybe attacked by criticism, whatever the case be. The pressures of the world. Jesus reminded us in John 16, verse 33, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. One of the challenges that many times people have is they sign up for this Christian thing. Then when they get the first challenges, they wonder why they're facing it. God never said that we'd be immune to hardships. He just said when we are in those moments, He's able to help us overcome them. Thank God for that. Remember, He was willing to die for us. And because of that, He has no problem in helping you live above problems. So shake off the attacks of your faith and keep stepping up higher and higher in ministry service for God inspired by Bruce Shelley's parable of an old dog that fell into a farmer's well. The farmer, after assessing the situation, sympathized with the dog, but he decided that neither the dog nor the well were worth the trouble of saving. So he planned to bury the old dog in that well and put him out of his misery. The farmer began shoveling, and initially... The old dog was hysterical, but as the farmer continued shoveling and the dirt hit the dog's back, how painful the, the blows were and distressing the situation may have seemed, somehow this dog got something in his mind, and that is, if he could just step up, that could help him. Shake it off and step up. So the dog kept shaking off the dirt that kept hitting his back and stepped up on the new dirt that had just fallen down. And soon... As the dog fought the panic and kept shaking off and stepping it up, the dog, battered and, and exhausted, stepped finally over top the well onto uh, ground because what could have thought to bury him instead benefited him as he shook it off and stepped up. Friend, that's what God wants you to do today. He knows things are going to come at you world is not your home. There's another home. And you expressing that fact have challenges that come your way because the enemy does not want you in the Father's house. The enemy wants you in his house. He'll do everything possible to tear your faith away. But if you just shake it off and step up, shake it off and step up, at some point you're going to step out of that circumstance and be an overcomer. Amen? Secondly, we need to live out what the Word says about being an overcomer. Live out what the Word says. God would not be requiring something of His church to be, maintain revival and maintain an overcoming spirit if He could not help us accomplish it. So daily fight the good fight of faith and have confidence that God will bring you victory and eternal reward. Friend, I'm not just looking for Jesus. I'm looking for something to present to Him. You ever gone to a party before and maybe you had nothing to give? It can be embarrassing, can't it? Friend, you can't send anything uh, from the natural to heaven. But you can send things for the eternal. And that is what God wants us to see here in Revelation 2 and 3. Know that the weapon 
of the enemy formed against you will not prosper. As a result, never give up. Renew your mind to pre- prevent you from being overcome by evil. Romans 12 verse 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil, how? With good. Revelation 12 11 admits, And they overcame or conquered Satan by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony or their ministry in the Spirit, as the Amplified would say. Revelation 19, verse 8, in the New American Standard Version says, The fine linen of our eternal garments are the righteous acts of the saints. God wants you to wear for eternity what you have done here on earth for Him. What a powerful truth that is as we realize the fact that saved people serve. You can't make heaven by your service. But if heaven is your focus, service should be your priority. Truly, it's vital that we advance as church, we win souls, we heal bodies, we deliver lives. For Luke chapter 10 verse 19 declares, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy. And this is the hour to do it because Jesus said, I'm going to the Father and while I'm going, you're going to do even greater works than these than I've done because I'm with him. So, friend, let's start believing for those greater works here at New Hope. Amen? Let's shake off tiredness and apathy. Let's take the authority that God has given to us. Let the inner peace of God become your outer strength for ministry. While you may question your ability, never question His ability to work through your life. 1 John 4, 4, the Amplified says, Little children, you're of God, belonging to Him, and have already defeated and overcome them, because He who lives in you is greater and mightier than He that's in the world. So, friend, when you step out, for example, on Friday night, I hope you've seen the bulletin already, we're going to homes, and we're going to share love to people, and we're going to have pizza here at 4.30, then we're going to go out from 5 to 7. When you walk up and knock on doors, in some cases, they're waiting for you. In other cases, when you make the presentation of, of being able to pray with them about something, and you pray and take authority over that, how powerful that is. Hundreds of people were reached the last time we went out. And we believe if we just have more people, we could reach a thousand or or better this time on Friday as we go out. You see, the Holy Spirit is your inner resource. He's the one that strengthens you. He's the one that helps you overcome in the opportunities to serve for God. So whether it's in the first impressions team outside in our foyer, whether it's the ushers that serve us here, whether it's van drivers, and Mike Russ today was sick, and we have needed van drivers to help us bring people here as last Sunday individuals wanted to come uh, this week. Using God's power and, and resources in kids' ministry, in nursery, in the sound room, in worship, in prayer ministry. There are so many ways that God can use your gifts if you just simply say, I want to be an overcomer. I want to yield my life to Him. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 in the Amplified says, so, too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid. He bears us up in our weakness. For we don't know what to pray to offer, but the Spirit Himself goes to meet our need. The Holy Spirit goes to meet our need. You may not feel like you're an overcomer. You may not feel like you have great ability. But, friend, there is somebody in you that's worth everything. That one that's in you, Romans 8 says is the one who raised Christ Jesus from the dead. You're carrying Easter power in your body 24-7. You're carrying the creative anointing of heaven in your life every day. So now we can't say, I can't do it. None of us can stand before the throne of grace and say, Jesus, I couldn't do anything down there in Taylor, Michigan, because I just did not have any gifts. He's going to say, what about the Holy Spirit I placed in your life? It's the only reason why I conclude when I read Revelation that God has a justifiable reason for giving us chapters 2 and 3. Revelations 2 and 3 are about churches, just like this. 
He says in Revelation 2, 7, to him who overcomes, I'll give the right. You'll see this on the screen. To eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Revelation 2.11, he who overcomes will not be hurt by all by the second death. Revelation 2.17, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Revelation 2.26, to him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. Revelation 3, 5, he who overcomes will be dressed in white, and I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. Revelation 3, 12, he who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. Hallelujah for these verses. I'm so thrilled. You can know where you're headed. You can know your destination. You can know your reward. God has already given us that assurance. Praise God for that fact. There's a world out here that's not sure whether they're going to heaven or not. But you can know. You can know because of what you're doing and the confirmation of God's Word in your heart. These are powerful promises, powering over the nations, the right to eat from the tree of life, immunity from the second death, and so on. They're all different ways of describing the blessings that come to the overcomer. Revelation 21, 3 and 4 says, they will be my people, and God himself will be with them and be their God, and he will wipe every tear from their eye. There'll be no more death, nor mourning, nor crying, or pain. Hallelujah! The former things are passed away for the overcomer that's pressing in on the things of God. It leads me to my third point. Write this down. Know what God's asking from you. The saints of the seven churches knew precisely what Christ was calling for them to do when he pronounced his blessing on them who overcomes. This overcoming entailed repenting of personal sins, Separating from the world, walking a life of faith, living without compromise, renouncing heresy, and faithfully following Christ, even under the pain of persecution and the threat of martyrdom. You see, God owned their lives, and they only had to heed the words that had been spoken to the churches of Revelation. Words that spoke of fulfilled ministry with a positive, expectant attitude of service. So stop saying, I can't, I don't have time, it's not my gift. Eternity is quickly coming, my friend, and it's time all of us do something great for God because of all Jesus has done for us. Believe in what God says about you. You're a child of a great God, greatly loved by Him, and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, Philippians 4.13. Force every thought in your mind to align itself back to God's Word about overcoming and throw everything else out. Instead of running from spiritual ministry, you need to run with confidence toward it and be encouraged as General Grant's action in the Battle of Shiloh in the Civil War with a serious number of casualties that first day of the Battle of Shiloh, General U.S. Grant was met by his greatly discouraged architect of the battle, James McPherson. History records these words. James McPherson said, things look bad, General Grant. We have lost half of our artillery and a third of our infantry. Our line is broken and we are pushed back nearly to the river. McPherson patiently asked what General Grant intended to do. And he was surprised when General Grant said, reform the lines and attack at daybreak. Won't they be surprised? So with a small Union army that remained, before daybreak, they all charged right against the Confederates. And that was a change both in that battle and in the war. Truly, God wants us to know that 
That battle, which was over by 9 o'clock that morning, happened because instead of choosing to be defeated, they chose to be overcomers. They chose instead of running from the battle to run to the battle. And God is saying the same to His church. Victory isn't always about your ability. Victory often is about your availability, your persistent faith, and your action in prayer. Overcoming involves using spiritual weapons to grow His church. In the book of Revelation, we see the church of Ephesus in chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, had forsaken their first love, and they needed to get back to it. The church of Smyrna, in Revelation 2, verses 8 through 11, had to overcome fear in serving and endure the pain of, endure, of persecution. The church of Sardis, Revelation 3, 1 through 6, had to awaken from its spiritual slumber and apathy and recommit themselves to Christ. The church of Philadelphia, Revelation 3, 7 through 13, had to hold on to what you have, that no one take your crown. The church of Laodicea, chapter 3, verses 14 through 22, had to pursue spiritual healing for its members and recommit their life to Christ. These seven churches in Revelation, that I believe, express the church age since Christ died on the cross until He comes in the rapture for His church, express the need for us to find ourselves overcoming in whatever category of church mentality we may have. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, I tell you that on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. But friend, the only way he can build his church is if you run toward ministry rather than running toward it, away from it. Many times people in church are more hungry for beating people to the restaurant than they are hungry in saying, God, I want to do something for you. Often people leave church early thinking as if my duty is over when really it only has begun. We come to church to be the church and to go forth proclaiming that. God tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, each of one is given the manifestation or gifts of the Spirit for the common good. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 adds, the Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as He wills. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 states, now God has placed the members, each one of them in the body, just as He desired. In other words, you're not here by accident. You are called by God to serve this church in a greater way. And if each of us will find our gifts and use them, we will multiply through our giftings and God will strengthen His church. We need each of you. No one is exempt from involvement in at least one area of ministry. And today, in a moment, we're going to ask each of you to commit to at least one area of ministry. Believing as we move into revival, it's not the fact that the pastor or the staff or somehow somebody brings it in, I just attend and hope it just works out okay. But each of us are called to win souls. Each of us are called to serve Him in a great way. Do you believe that, friend? Do you believe that, friend? The Bible speaks about the fact in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 7, 8, and 9, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. In other words, the church is an overcoming church doing what God's called us to do, realizing we can overcome fear of failure, criticism, incompetence, or what people think. Whatever weakness, worry, or fear you may have, God assures us we can overcome. Each of us are gifted to serve God in a great way. So whether you're 12 or whether you're a hundred today in this auditorium, you're not exempt from the fact as long as there's breath in your body, you have a responsibility to serve God effectively through that. It may be in prayer ministry. It may be a variety of things, but you have a place that God's called you to. Do you believe that today? Would you stand to your feet, please? Because we would like to make a concert of commitment today. 
a concert of commitment. Normally, we will call people to the altar. Normally, we will pray the prayer for people to accept Christ. And if you're in this service today and you've watched this pastor passionately preach this message and you're saying, I don't know Jesus, let me simply tell you, all you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And he'll do that. Somewhere maybe around 40 or 50 children did that last Sunday, and about 40 adults, counting both the Good Friday and Easter service last Sunday. We thank God for that. But the issue is, it's more than just getting saved. You are saved to serve. Thank you. Let's pray this prayer. On the screen, there's a prayer. I'd like us to pray in concert to God. If you'll mean this in your heart, something's going to happen in this church. Let's pray this prayer together. Father, I want to be your child. Let's pray it together. And do what you expect of an overcomer. I want to make heaven and be rewarded by you one day for the things I have done here in appreciation for what you have done for me. Help me overcome all apathy and excuses that have kept me from serving your purposes. I understand everyone is called to use their calling from you. This church needs me, and I ask that you help me use the power of the Spirit you have given me. We need to grow your church and experience revival. Help me do my part in prayer and participation. The Bible shows that saved people serve. Help me respond to an area of ministry I can best serve in. I am yours to do what you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for what has been prayed. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Lord, we respond to you. It's not in mere words. God, our hearts say, God, use me. I yield myself to you, God. Thank you for hearing that prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let your kingdom move.